Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage, I'm Bart, and in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the installation of an LED flasher relay on your bike. Anytime you replace your OEM signal equipment with aftermarket LED type signals, there may be a symptom present where you go into hyperflash, which is flashing much faster than the OEM 85 cycle per minute rate, slower flash, which presents itself as very, very slow flash rate, or any of the following two, stuck on or stuck off. What you see in front of me are four different examples of our LED flasher relay. They are a direct replacement for the OEM equipment. They have the same kind of tab that you use for mounting the actual device onto the bike. We do have several different types of sockets that are adaptable to different motorcycles. In this video, we'll show you the appropriate part for your motorcycle so that you can make your installation plug and play and without any fuss. So we've already covered why you would want to mount one of these relays onto your bike. Let's get into a few details here really quick before we get into the installation. These are plug and play. They also work with a combination of different types of signaling equipment. So for instance, if you changed one signal pair to LED and still keeping the OEM incandescent light bulbs in the other positions, that'll work. No big deal. Just don't exceed three amps of current draw. In in addition to plug and playability and easy installation, we do also have adjustability built into this relay. If you strip off the gray cap, you'll be able to adjust the flash rate, fine tune it to your liking, faster or slower. It does arrive to you preset to 85 cycles per minute, like the OEM systems. If you feel the need to change that, you have that capability just by following those steps. At the end of this video, we will have a detailed explanation showcased on a bike so that you can follow along and have the steps broken down for you. Now I'm chomping at the bit to show you guys just how easy it is to install and configure this on a bike. But before we do, I wanted to answer two questions that are very common that our customer service folks have asked me to answer in this video. One of them is how many relays do I need for one motorcycle? It's just one relay that controls front and rear, left and right. No big deal. The other question is, does this work with sequential signaling equipment? Yes, it does. No problem. In fact, signaling equipment that uses a sequential pattern typically doesn't complete the sequence from inboard to outboard. If the flash rate is too fast, using one of these relays will enable your equipment to complete each blink sequence and be good to go. All right, let's grab ourselves a motorcycle and let's continue with this install. Begin by removing the two bolts located on the left side of the headlight shroud. We have a lower bolt and one located just above our LED turn signals. And on the opposite side, there is a bolt located in this exact location, but on the right side of the bike. As you remove these bolts, ensure that the Shoulder washer is removed with him. Now with all the hardware removed, we can focus on removing the headlight to gain access to the OEM flasher relay. In order to do so, I recommend placing your hands on each side of the headlight. You're gonna pry in an outward fashion and then remove these cables from this holder and gently pry upward. And as you can see, we have full access. Now, in order to not stress any of the connections, I'm going to disconnect the headlight, place that to the side, and you can see here, located on the right side if you're looking at the bike, or the left side if you're standing behind the bike for whatever reason, you can see right here, we have our stock relay. It is on the bottom right behind the headlight, sitting on a post, and it is the only relay located behind this. Now it is important to note that this particular rider on um, this particular model has installed an aftermarket dash, which is why we have a lot more wiring than you may find on your model. Just please keep in mind, this is the factory location of the relay, so no matter what, it should be located there. We will gently press down on the locking tab and pry outward. So press down on this, pull outward, freeing the relay. And then we can simply go ahead and 
reconnect our relay. And just like that, you will now see that we have a correct flash rate. Both signals will flash at the same 85 cycles per minute. And should you wish to adjust that flash rate, you can do so. But this installation is now complete. So we can go ahead, if you'd like, you can tuck the relay on the post by bending outward on the mounting tab located behind our relay. So you would bend outward gently on this guy. And then you can push on this tab just slightly. Let me turn this bike off and it can lock itself in place. Now we make sure that all of our wiring is out of the way as we begin the reinstallation process of the headlight. First, we are going to reconnect the headlight, the main plug. We will insert the posts on the bottom of the headlight into the receiving posts on the front fender. Reroute the cables, making sure they're not twisted. And now we can grab the factory hardware that we removed and reinstall. We will start with this bottom bolt. Cardinal rule, always begin tightening nuts and bolts by hand to prevent cross threading. We have one last bolt. And once you have all of that hardware bottomed out by hand, you can now grab your tool and go another eighth to a sixteenth of a turn, ensuring that these bolts are properly tightened down. You don't want to over tighten as you may skip threads. There we are. And as you can see, just like that, this installation is now complete. We have successfully installed our LED flasher relay, re-obtained a correct signal flash rate of 85 cycles per minute, and best of all, it was all plug and play. Okay, our process here will be portrayed in a model agnostic way. This will be applicable to any model out there. We just chose this motorcycle because we had it handy. I typically like to start with my relay still plugged in. I rotate it to find this area here, pry it up with a small flathead screwdriver, and basically pry out the red portion from the gray cap. Some of our other relays have a different color uh, connector portion so they won't be red. When you leave this still plugged into its connector, the gray cap will generally typically come off and the circuit board will still be in there. If for some reason you cannot do this with the relay plugged in, the procedure will be as follows. Same step here, dislodge the cap. This will come off. And if it has two pins, there's only one way for it to fit in there. We'll take the circuit board out. Technically, you can put it in reverse, but you'll notice that it sticks out of the side here and is not aligned properly. So I will hold it like this. I will plug it back into the connector. We will need to make the adjustment under power. Turn the power on, leave the signal that you can actually still see in uh, flashing mode. We'll take a small Phillips screwdriver, access this potentiometer, and turning it one way will increase the speed. There is a delay in the speed effect, so as soon as you turn it, if you were to turn it really fast, it'll take a while for it to catch up to the speed that you actually set. So give it a little bit of time before you judge it. All the way counterclockwise is fast. All the way clockwise is slow. 
you will generally find something in between that will please you. And once you've made that adjustment, you could close the cap. Now, here's a very important note that I wanna underline. As you can see, I'm holding this relay away from contact with anything. Generally, when working within a bike, we can potentially make contact between these electrical components with a ground, with any other metal components. We could short some of the connections there, and that will likely cause damage to the electronic components on board. So we want to make sure that we keep this as far away as we can from any metal components, and also do not touch any of the contacts here on board with a metal tool. So be very, very careful about that. Now the reinstallation of the cap is as follows. We'll look inside. We'll notice that there is a channel here and here, and that is what accepts the circuit board. So you find that channel, you match the circuit board to it, snap it on, make sure both sides engage, and then hang the relay in its appropriate place.